let's go ahead and create a standalone React app. What that means is we're not going to use npx create React app. Instead, what we're going to use is the React CDN. So we're going to use the React and React DOM script files separate from our actual React project, right? And I'm using React 16, but this method should still work uh, for the foreseeable future. So what do we have to do here? Well, first off, definitely make sure that you have Node.js installed so you can run something like NPM. If you type out NPM on your terminal or PowerShell, you're gonna hopefully see something like this. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a directory and I'm gonna call it standalone react and we're gonna cd into standalone react. And in here, this is where I'm gonna do several things. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it into my text editor, which in my case, I'm using sublime text. I just drag that file over the app icon and then I'm gonna save this project as stand alone react. Okay, so I will put this repo on GitHub too and you can find that on cfe.sh slash GitHub and just look for the name of this project, which is standalone react. Okay, so now that we've got that, we're gonna go to the next step, which is making our package.json. So if you're familiar with NPM, you can do NPM in it, or you can actually declare your own package.json and put in some details that you wanna have. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy what's already in that blog post, and we're gonna go step-by-step -step as to what it is. First of all, we name our project, however you wanna name it. You give it a version number. This is completely up to you on how you wanna version it. You write where your initial JavaScript file is gonna be. In my case, it's app.js, and of course, I don't have that quite yet, so let's go ahead and just make a blank file, so app.js. Okay, next thing, we have scripts that are, we're gonna run. The start script, all it does is open up your browser window there, and then it runs a Python 3 server. Now, the reason I'm using a Python 3 web server, a very basic one, is to not have to install extra things inside of this package, right? So I don't wanna have other dev dependencies for this. I wanna make it very, very minimal. And of course, author, license, keyword, description, those are pretty self-explanatory. The final thing is the dev dependencies. So we're using Babel. Babel's gonna allow us to really make all of this work. Babel, in conjunction with React, make you make the ability to run like Minify. So what we see up here, the build script, it allows us to take our app.js and make app.min.js and it allows us to minify that and also watch it, so watch for changes. So whenever I make changes to app.js, they will automatically go into app.min.js as long as they're valid. So that's pretty cool. And Babel will also allow us to use JSX, which is a different syntax for writing JavaScript, which is what you'll see in just a moment. So now let's go ahead and configure Babel so we can run this command effectively as well as using those arrow methods. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new file in here and it's gonna be called dot babble rc. Make sure you use that dot babble rc, just like that. And what we're gonna use is this. So it's coming directly from that blog post and this allows us to use JSX. So um, a different type of writing JavaScript, but really it's a, so we can minify that JSX, and then this one is so we can use those arrow methods. There are other pieces to that, but I just wanna make sure you knew that. And then of course, once you have those plugins in, we can also add that Minify preset as well. Okay, great. So Babel is now set up. The next thing we need to do, of course we wanna save Babel, um, and then we wanna go into our app.js. Now the blog post goes into the HTML first, we're gonna go into the app.js first. So in here, we're gonna use strict, and then we're gonna do const e equals to react.create element. Okay, so both of these will allow us to actually use our React app inside of this app.js, and in a way that you might be familiar with. Except now what we're doing is we no longer have to do something like import react 
from React. Like you most likely, if you, especially if you've done uh, npx create React app, you would have seen this import syntax. We, we don't need that anymore uh, for a couple reasons. One of them being that we'll actually use the CDN version of React, right? So we don't need to do that, especially because of that. So um, the next step is to actually create our first component. And this is gonna work in a similar fashion that you might expect. We say class hello world and it extends. Well, something I'm so used to doing is just saying extends component. But of course the component is a class of React, so it's react.component. Maybe you're familiar with that, maybe not, but that's how you actually get that component itself. And then we're just gonna re uh, return a rendered function, so render, and then return. I'll just go ahead and start off with hello world. Cool. So it looks like this is like not valid JSX, but it actually is. To make sure that Sublime knows that it's valid, we can install the Babel package. So Command Shift P, and then we go to Install Package, and we look for the Babel package. So syntax definitions for ES6 JavaScript and React JS X, which is what we're doing. And we're gonna just come in here and then set syntax Babel. Great. So now that we've got that, we can do the next portion, which is actually rendering this component in the DOM. But before I render it, I'm gonna go ahead and make my index file now. So index.html. And now what I wanna do is bring in the code from the documentation, that blog post. And this is what I wanna change, right? So a couple things to note, we've got Babel here as a standalone app, right? The next thing is using the production version of React JS, and then the production version of React DOM JS, and then finally our app, right? So app.min.js, which is what will be built after we run package. Okay, so this brings me back into rendering our project, right? So I called the class CFE app. You could use an ID of CFE app, or you could change it however you want. The idea here though, is we need to use just pure JavaScript as a selector for whatever this element is, and then change that element to work with our React project. This is standard for React DOM, but if you're not familiar with it, it's important to know. So what I wanna do is change all elements of the CFE app. So I wanna use class in that case. So I just am going, like in, in other words, if I had you know, several of these, I would wanna make sure that I can render out all of them at once. This would be good for like a like button, for example, especially if you have multiple like buttons on a page, you're gonna to wanna to be able to render all of them out. So in app.js, we set a variable called containers and the containers are document, query, selector, all, and it's dot CFE app, right? So that's completely arbitrary, completely arbitrary. Cool. So now that we've got that, we're gonna do containers dot for each, and we're gonna go through each container and we're gonna call it a DOM container. And we're gonna use the arrow method or the arrow function so we can render this out and I'll go ahead and say const user ID equals to, well, what is that equal to? So we already set some values here and we did data dash and then something in here. So user ID can now be associated with this DOM container. So I can use DOM container dot data set dot user ID. So you could console log what the data set is to get more information on other attributes that you might add to that element, but this will give me that user ID. Don't worry, I'll, I'll show you why I'm doing this in a moment. And now we can use React DOM. So remember, in my index file, I am calling in React DOM, so it's right there, so I don't have to import it. It's already available for me. So React DOM.render, and then we wanna rem render an element, our React element, and so let's go ahead and add another line here so we can see exactly what's going on. That's this create element call here. We've got a React element and the element itself is hello world. And then we can pass in any props that we wanna have. So user ID is equal to or set as 
the user ID here. And then finally, where do we actually want to render that? And that's inside of the DOM container. Okay, great. So we save this. This is a minified React project. We've got our index already referencing app.min.js. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my terminal window. And I'm going to do npm run build. So I want to build the app first. Looks like we got a, a JSON error. So let's look in our package to ensure that it's all there. Oh yes, of course. So uh, a critical step that we did not do is npm install. Okay. Just a little skip on after you made the package.json, you, you certainly want to make sure that everything's installed. Now we're going to go ahead and do npm run build. And it's going to build out this file. We don't have any errors at this time. It would tell us if we had errors. And it's also watching for changes. So I don't need to do that yet because I'm not really developing yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do npm run start. This should open up a browser window for you as well as um, our local host here. Okay, so I've got it open. I'm gonna open up a JavaScript console and React DOM is not defined, right? So React DOM, lowercase, just a little spelling issue done on purpose. So React DOM, we change that. We close out that HTTP server running we rebuild it, we run that server again, and what do you know? So that part's working. Now, I wanna make sure that both my HTTP server is running as well as my project so I can actually do some development. Let's go into our dev folder, into our standalone React project here, and I'll do npm run build. Okay, so now I can make some changes to the code in real time. Now, do keep in mind, I am using the production environment. If you wanted to use the development environment to get all of the React development stuff, you can just change this to being development and then it would be react.development.js. And then when you wanna go into production, you would use production.min.js. So back into our app.js here, I'm gonna go ahead and use a method here and we'll say handle click and I'm gonna set it equal to the function event. And then I'll just say alert, hello there. Okay, with that, we have to bind this. So inside of our constructor, we do props and super props. And then this dot handle click dot bind this. Okay. So now on my hello world here, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a span around hello world. And I'll just do it on click. And we'll say this dot handle click. Okay, so we save that. And we're gonna go ahead and refresh into our project. Looks like I accidentally closed it out. So let's go ahead and open it back up. Okay, there it is, and I click on it, and what do you know? It says hello there. Cool. So this is a lot of redundant code here though, uh, as you might already know, right? So instead of using this, we can use an arrow and put the event in there and then use the arrow method, and then we no longer need to bind it because that binds it already, and now our code is more concise. And now we can go here, cool. One last thing is we passed in the property from this element right here. So if I change them, so one, two, three, you know, four and five, whatever I wanted to call them, I could also just say like something like ABC, the actual number or what's in there doesn't matter in this case. And I'm gonna go ahead and do const and we'll use these curly brackets to get the props. So this dot props. This just unpacks this into whatever you want it to be. In my case, um, I need that user ID, right? So that's the actual value here. So I can unpack it like this. And then we can bring that into our render. And after we save everything, we might need to reload our script. I'm just gonna reload it, refresh, and there you go. So you got one, ABC, three, four, five. Very good. So uh, now we have a fully functioning React application that can be reused everywhere. 
and it's all coming from app.min.js. And the, the size of that file is 604 bytes, right? Really cool. And, and I mean, with it minified, I mean, that's, that's the entire code right there. Uh, that is awesome. That decouples things. And now if you wanted to make this component available across the web, all you would need to do is create a CDN for that component and then make sure that whoever's using it would also use these things right here. So those are requirements to ensure that this is running. Um, you could test it out without Babel, but I don't. I, I honestly don't think that that will work. So we try it, and yeah, we get some problems there. So you have to have Babel, you have to have React, you have to have React DOM. Pretty cool. So that's a standalone React app. Um, I realized we covered a lot of things that were in the documentation, but I do think this is really valuable to use for many reasons, but especially if you're trying to make just a really little tiny app and you can leverage the content delivery network of these other things instead of having a much bigger app that would have all of this packaged into it. Now, when I say much bigger, it's not gonna be huge, but it's certainly not gonna be as small as this, and you don't get the benefit of the speed from using the content delivery network, right? So if you're not familiar with how that would work here, Essentially what that means is if anyone ever downloads this onto their local browser from any site, it's gonna load significantly faster on your site because it'll most likely already be on their local browser. So they won't have to reload these scripts here. They will already be there. That's a big part of the reason you would use a CDN. And then the next thing is actually loading up your app will be significantly faster as well. So there's a lot of wins there versus if you used just React Create App, um, or Create React App, rather. If you use that and it's all packaged in one or two scripts, then they have to load all of those one or two scripts that you have, although those are efficient, React has made them very, very efficient, it still takes more time than it would to just load these three things up. Pretty cool.